Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Was not planning on doing a video today as I'm doing some traveling from uh, Norman to Arizona to see the family for a few weeks. Uh, but just got to Albuquerque and this morning we actually had a pretty significant surprise tornado in Northeast North Carolina. Some footage you see here, pretty intense tornado that occurred in an environment that was not expected to produce tornadoes. Uh, as you can see here, a very large tornado at that. Here's a still image uh, from this morning. Actually did some EF3 damage in the town of Dorches, North Carolina, as you see here. Some pretty in, uh, significant damage there. And it also did some damage to a Pfizer uh, plant manufacturing facility in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. So very intense tornado. Was not expected. Uh, so I thought I would throw together a quick video on this setup um, again, this is going to be a very quick one. Uh, just kind of threw some things together here, uh, just a few over the last hour or so after I got into Albuquerque for the night. Uh, but a very interesting event and definitely deserves a video, I think. So let's go ahead and dive in. We started this morning with just a marginal risk out in that ne neck of the woods, just a marginal risk all up the eastern seaboard uh, from the Philadelphia area all the way down south to the Savannah, Georgia area. Marginal risk everywhere in between. Our main severe weather risk was out here from the Great Lakes into the central and southern plains with a slight risk there across western Tennessee. So our most significant event. Uh, severe weather was expected to occur today. Uh, we actually did get an upgrade though eventually to a slight risk and initially was not even in a tornado risk area uh, but at the 1630 update uh, with some things coming together they did bump up to a slight risk with a 2% here uh, for northeast North Carolina up toward the Virginia Beach area. So very uh, so a lot of even the best forecasters here at the SPC were caught a little off guard no one was really expecting a significant tornado out of this environment today um, out on the east coast let's dive in here and really a pretty nondescript pattern as far as tornadoes go you see here at 12z this morning so uh, 8 a.m eastern time just a little a shortwave trough embedded in what appears to be a, a much larger, um, very low amplitude long wave trough here across the eastern half of the country. Some stronger flow relegated well back here to the west. Little vorticity maximum, little area of shortwave, little um, wave aloft there. Mo pretty much uh, just sitting there, meandering very slowly to the east with time this morning. You'll see as we go through, this is at 11z, 12z. We go through, it just doesn't really move a whole lot. We have just this broad uh, little short wave here, uh, staying put for most of the day. But that was enough to have a little bit of large scale forcing for a scent out here across Northeast North Carolina out ahead of that little short wave. And you know, with this uh, nondescript of a short wave, we would not expect to see really a significant surface pattern at least for, from a tornado standpoint. You see here, not much to go off of here, a little bit of a surface high pressure ridge, in fact, out across Tennessee into the southeast states. A little bit of a trough out here, you could call that, across central North Carolina, I would just call that a little bit of a surface trough. You see the winds here. They do form a little bit of a troughing feature out here across North Carolina, but not by any means a tight surface low. Uh, and uh, similarly, not really a strong low-level jet to speak of as well. Uh, just a little bit of a trough at 850 millibars. Winds out ahead of that trough, staying about 20 to 30 knots or so. We do see a little bit of an increase here out across north central to northeast North Carolina at about 16Z. The tornado occurred just before 17Z. So right after lunchtime uh, today is when the tornadoes occurred up here in northeast North Carolina near the town of Dorches. Actually, before we go on, I'm going to show you the storm reports uh, from today just to give you an idea where this was before we go any further. And there's your red dots there right in northeast North Carolina. And when we do our little sounding analysis, I'll put a map up to show you uh, where this tornado occurred and where the soundings were taken. Right there, northeast North Carolina, the town of Dorches and Rocky Mount, North Carolina. But again, not much of a, not a pattern that would scream tornadoes at you uh, from a just a superficial look at things. Uh, here is some surface data to show you that we do have uh, obviously ample moisture in place. Proximity to our moisture source, of course, the Atlantic Ocean is very, very low. So we have very strong moisture in here mid to even upper 70s dew points across the area. We even have an 81 degree dew point reading there in eastern North Carolina. Whether that's accurate or not remains to be seen. Doesn't change much throughout the day, so that might be a, a bogus reading, but still. Mid to upper 70s dew points out here across the region. 81 over 80 there uh, in northern North Carolina. So very rich moisture 
out here across the region. But again, not much of a surface pattern that would uh, make you think of tornadoes. So oftentimes we see those, those 10, 15, 20 knot winds out of the southeast in those big time east coast and southeast tornado events. Well, we don't really have that out here today. Five to 10 knots of flow there at the surface out of the south southwest or even south. We do get a little bit of backing here out across northeast North Carolina right about the time that the tornadoes were ongoing. So a little bit of localized backing here. And our job here is to figure out why. And it became pretty clear that our feature was going to be a remnant MCV, or mesoscale convective vortex. And a mesoscale convective vortex is simply, and we've talked about it before on the channel, but it's simply an area of spin that gets left behind by a dying complex of severe storms. So an MCS will, will move off to the east usually. It'll um, generally die off a little bit, and it will leave in its wake sometimes a, an area of spin. And you can often see it very clearly on satellite or on radar. So we're going to go back on our broad radar view here. This is at 0Z the previous day, so about 8 p.m. yesterday evening, July 18th. So you see here we have an ongoing MCS, lots of stratiform rain behind the MCS. Here is um, North Carolina, here is Virginia right here, just to give you some uh, perspective, West Virginia right here. So pretty large MCS, extensive MCS here, moving to the east out across the region. Now take a look at the bottom portion of your screen here. I want you to focus in on this area right here. Watch what happens as the MCS starts to die. We get that beautiful area of spin down there, and you can really, really see it as I'm playing this animation. I'll go back and start it again, but right in here, very, very well-defined area of spin as this MCS decays as it moves to the east yesterday evening into the overnight hours. Just a very, very well-defined area of spin. That is your MCV, or mesoscale convective vortex. So that MCV doesn't go anywhere. The, the MCS itself dies off. The MCV keeps meandering off to the east, and these have been well known to produce pretty much surprise tornado events out ahead of them on occasion when the parameters are right. We saw this, for example, on August 24, 2016, the Indiana Northwest Ohio outbreak. For example, Kokomo, Indiana, uh, well, that, was a, that was a very notable MCV event. And if you'd like to learn more about MCV events, I very much strongly suggest that you check out Cameron Nixon's article on remnant MCV tornadoes. This goes really into depth on these MCV tornado events, as they are very, very difficult to forecast. But anytime there is an MCV, we need to be on the lookout for these kinds of events, as they can come by surprise and produce some pretty interesting stuff, as we saw this morning. So I'm going to play this one more time for you. Go back and just keep your eye on that, that bottom left corner of the screen. Just a beautiful area of spin behind the decaying MCS. That is your MCV. Now it continues on off to the east into the morning hours. That convection out ahead of it continues. And oftentimes the convection out ahead will die off a little bit uh, or even for good. We had the maintenance of these storms out ahead. And this would end up being the show as it moved the MCV to kind of took a more northeast turn here toward northeast North Carolina. Convection remained out ahead of that MCV. You can still see the swirl on radar. And then by mid-morning or so, and approaching lunchtime, we got that cluster of storms in the southern end of that cluster. We were able to break out a supercell from that, and that supercell would go on to produce the EF3 tornado near the town of Dorches, North Carolina. Here is our satellite view. It's a little bit tougher to see on satellite here, but you'll notice this little area of spin. It, it almost looks like an area of spin there just from our still image, but if I play it a little bit, you'll see a very subtle area of spin out across central North Carolina. I'll go back and do that again. That is your MCV moving off to the east northeast, and out ahead of that, we, got, we had a little bit of sunshine. Often in these MCV events, you'll see very muted uh, surface heating out ahead of them. We do see quite a bit of cloud cover, but we did get enough heating to build some instability out ahead of that MCV, and those storms maintain themselves throughout the morning and continue to strengthen throughout the um, early, uh, late morning to early afternoon hours, right about lunchtime, and right about this time is when we saw our tornadic activity across northeast North Carolina. Pretty nondescript satellite image as well, not that very large, tall, uh, really explosive convection that you might see in the plains, say, during the summer when you have a big severe weather event um, with massive, massive instability. Uh, but these were small storms. These were tiny storms, as they often are out ahead of the MCVs, these mini supercells. And you'll see on radar, as I pull up the radar imagery here, this is a little bit of a closer view from radar scope, reflectivity on the top, uh, correlation coefficient, so our debris signature, we're able to see debris, lofted debris from the tornado on the bottom. And you'll see we just have this cluster of storms 
and this is in central daylight time here, but the cluster of storms move, uh, moves off to the east, um, and this southern supercell starts to take shape here uh, and become our main player. Moves off to the east, uh, crosses the highway right there. Again, this is a very tiny storm. This is not a very large storm at all. Very tiny, almost mini supercell, but just a classic classic hook shape to that supercell with a pretty significant debris signature as it crosses the highway there and does some EF3 damage near the town of Dorches. And staying on the ground for quite some time. You see that debris signature continues uh, well to the east, and this tornado has been in progress for you know, 10, 15 minutes plus at this point, maybe even more than that, maybe even a half hour at this point, uh, perhaps off and on, but then uh, as we continue forward, we go through the loop. Just a, a pretty impressive look to that. Um, and we had just enough heating, just enough spin in the northeast quadrant of that MCV uh, to produce this supercell. And the northeast quadrant of these MCVs is often where these uh, tornado events will happen. Cameron Nixon has showed that in his research and given the direction of motion of the MCV, it will often happen in that right front quadrant, as it does in a hurricane. You have your area of spin here. Well, where are the winds going to be most backed um, if this is the center of your MCV? Well, it's going to be in that northeast quadrant usually, and that leads to those bigger hodographs, stronger low-level flow enhanced in the northeast quadrant of that MCV, and therefore your most likely area for MCV tornadoes is going to be in that northeast quadrant. And here was no exception. Now, this was a little bit different as we had the um, MCV was very, very, very much in close proximity uh, to the actual activity. I'll back up to the radar here and show you once again. You can see that area of spin, and really, it's tough to pinpoint exactly where the center of that MCV is, probably right in there. So right out ahead, uh, maybe just in the east, on the east side of that MCV is where your uh, supercell was able to occur. And that also is a favored location for tornadoes, right? The MCV, MCV either moves in the direction, uh, the tornadoes occur in the direction of motion of the MCV or in the northeast quadrant of the MCV. And the former, it looks like, was the case with this event. So very interesting, classic, classic MCV event. I just want to play this radar one more time as it's, it's just so clear that this MCV uh, was going to be a possible factor in the environment for severe weather across the uh, east coast uh, and it became pretty evident early in the morning as these storms continued out ahead of that area of spin that they could be uh, interesting and the environment was favorable for severe weather out ahead of it here is a couple of uh, rap proximity soundings these were taken from uh, rocky mount north carolina the wilson regional airport and rocky mount as you can see on the map there is very close to dorches so we have a very very close look close proximity look to the uh, tornadic supercell from these wrap soundings. So we start at 14Z, already have decent instability in place from that surface heating out ahead of the MCV, about 1,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. Hodographs, though, not super, super favorable. They don't scream significant tornadoes, right? Decent amount of deep layer shear, about 33 knots or so. That is in, on the margins for sustained supercells, but definitely adequate for supercells. Low level curvature, not all that strong. We do see a little bit of curvature there in the low levels, a little bit of veering of those low level winds with height, a little bit of curvature there. And this is at 14Z, so 10 a.m. Eastern time. 15Z, much of the same. And here's 16Z, right before the tornadoes occurred. You see a little bit of an enhancement of and localized backing there at the surface out ahead of that MCV as it approaches. So here's 14Z. Keep an eye on those surface winds right there. 15Z, and now 16Z, we have a nice little bit of backing there, and we saw that on our surface data uh, that we looked at earlier. Um, those winds out ahead in northeast North Carolina started out very much out of the south-southwest. They turned a little bit more toward the due south during the morning, and then by about tornado time, just before 17Z, a nice little backed area of backed winds out ahead in northeast North Carolina to help lengthen those hodographs in the low levels and curve those hodographs just a little bit more to enhance the tornado threat there in northeast North Carolina. Decent uh, instability, again, about 1,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. You don't need a lot of instability in these the environments uh, with the an added shear and spin from that MCV. That will be just enough to get those updrafts, even however small they are, to start spinning. Now, decent low-level instability as well, 0 to 3 kilometer cape above 50 joules per kilogram, so more than adequate for um, um, that to enhance that stretching potential with those supercells uh, out ahead of the MCVs and aid in tornado genesis. We'll take a look back here at our 0 to 3 kilometer cape and vorticity product, our quote unquote cheat code, if you will. We talk about it all the time on the channel here. 
it's that cheat code. The blue contours are your vorticity, so low level spin, and your red contours are zero to three kilometer cape, low, low level instability that helps to stretch that spin into the vertical and aid in tornado genesis. In supercells, we move on and pretty darn classic 16Z. And we have those surface vorticity contours there overlapped with those red three cape uh, values uh, approaching 100 joules per kilogram or so in Northeast North Carolina. That is a cheat code, uh, as we talked about before. Nice recipe for tornadoes there. Uh, enhancing that low level stretching potential with that enhanced spin from the MCV, helping to aid in tornado genesis in that supercell. A little bit of curvature in the hodographs as well, so low level shear increase slightly thanks to those little bit more backed low level winds. All in all, looking back, of course, hindsight is 2020, but this was definitely a tornado environment for any supercell that could sustain itself ahead of the MCV. And of course, we did get those supercells, that one lone supercell to sustain ahead of the MCV. Here's a close in radar view of that. Just a very, once again, very small supercell, but a classic hook echo there. A little bit of a debris ball on the end there. There's Dorches there. Uh, and a little bit of debris being lofted right in close proximity. You're, as is the case often with these MCV tornado events and these low-topped mini supercell tornado events, your velocity signature not all that strong. It's not that really, really tight couplet you'd see with a strong tornado in the plains in May, for example. It, definitely a t rotational signature here, some broad, uh, some light grays and greens there, inbounds, but strong outbounds here, radar, must be to the south of this couplet here. Actually, it is at Raleigh, I believe, so to the southwest. So uh, outbounds, very strong outbounds with some weak inbounds. Definitely a tornado signature there, even though it doesn't present itself as a strong tornado signature. These mini, mini supercells don't often look like uh, a, you know, a significant tornado producers on radar, but as we see from to today's, today's event, it certainly can produce significant tornadoes when the atmosphere is right. So once again, that's going to do it for this video. Pretty impressive day today. A quote unquote surprise. These MCV environments are very, very tough to forecast. As you can see, we started off the day in a marginal risk. Uh, so even the best in the business did not see this coming. Um, and the, MC, the environment ahead of an MCV has to be just right to get tornadoes. But when it does go right, we can get some pretty significant events like August 24, 2016 in Indiana and Ohio. And for example, like today in Northeast North Carolina. So very interesting event. Uh, and one that we can definitely learn from. Uh, and in hindsight, definitely a um, pretty classic MCV tornado event. Not expected to be, uh, you know, we don't expect to see these significant tornadoes with MCV events, but when the atmosphere is right, some pretty interesting things can happen. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.